The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I have an uncle, Uncle Bennett, my dear Uncle Bennett. He grew up on the Lower East Side of Manhattan, and his mishpacha was so close to the mishpacha of Ramesha Feinstein. It was mamish like family, and Ramesha said it was like family. He expressed it that way. And my Uncle Bennett, he had this course, he ran errands for Ramesha. From a very young age, I think my was from the age of seven, eight years old, he was running errands for Ramesha. He was in Masif to Tavash, Shalayim, and he was very close. Ramesha needed something, so he did it for him. He was the man. It was a huge, huge schuss, and he was very responsible. As he got older, 14, 15, 16, so he learned how to drive. He learned how to drive, he got a hold of a car. So then his, his shimush of Ramesha Feinstein went to a totally new level. He was able to drive Ramesha, and he was able to take him places. Ramesha needed to go somewhere. My Uncle Bennett, he was the driver. He didn't, he didn't uh, limit himself to one car. He would always show up with different cars. Some of them he owned, some of them he borrowed, some of them he picked up somewhere. Some of them were very, very old, and Ramesha was always amused. Because he never knew what's going what's to happen next. He'd see the car. He, he would be amused. It would be Mesamerim. There's a car. There was one very, very old car that Ramesha told Uncle Bennett that that car he hasn't seen since the days in Luban. Ramesha finds him was the rub of Luban. He said that was the last time he saw this car. It was an ancient car. It was an antique. And my uncle, he'd pick him up from the yeshiva on East Broadway from Tefaz Yishalayim. And then he would drive there wherever Ramesha wanted to take him. He went there, picked him up, and he started driving. And it turned out that Ramesha wanted to go somewhere, which is the opposite direction of the way they were going. And no problem for someone as proficient. He was a proficient driver, skillful. He'll do a U-turn in the middle of East Broadway. He'll get it done. He turns the wheel. you got to turn the wheel, you know, like this. And then you get to the very end, and you floor the gas, and the car turns around and goes in the other direction. And he turns the wheel, and the, the car starts going around, and for like a second, the car is blocking all the traffic. But it's only a second, so it's no big deal. But like in the middle of the turn, as the car is turning, and it's blocking both sides of the street. And Baruch Hashem, there were no cars coming, so it wasn't really blocking anyone. But he's holding the steering wheel, and then the steering wheel pops out. The steering wheel, there's the wheel part that you hold, and then there's a metal post, and that goes inside of something, and it goes around, and it's not supposed to do that. It popped out. And the car was stopped. He had to stop the car. Because to drive the car when there's no steering wheel is not very, very, very wise. He stopped the car. The car is blocking traffic. By then, there were cars on both sides. And the cars on both sides, they start beeping, and they start honking. This is the Lower East Side. They beep. They they shemizichnished. And starts beeping and honking and sticking their head out the windows, what's going on? And he is standing, sitting there in the car, Ramesha's in the back, he's in the front. He's holding the steering wheel with the metal piece coming out of it, and he doesn't know what to do. And he can't drive. And people are getting angry and upset. He doesn't know what to do, and he's got Ramesha. And Uncle Bennett told me this story. He mumsh froze up. He heard Ramesha's voice from behind, from the back seat of the car. He says, Binyamin, Binyamin, calm down. You talk to him in Yiddish. Calm down, Baruch He said, just listen to me. Don't listen to the honking, because he was going nuts with the honking and the beeping. Listen to me. Take the steering wheel, put it back inside, and then you'll be able to drive. And Ramesha's voice had a calming effect on him. He took the steering wheel, he put it back in. It came out, he put it back in. And then he was able to complete the turn, he was able to drive her right to where he had to go. Ramesha, the steering wheel's got to get fixed. Ramesha felt that since it happened while he was on yeshiva business, so then the yeshiva should pay for a hey, look at the repairs, of it, you know, because they, they the, this is like the yeshiva car, it's the one that, that, that takes Ramesha here and there. And Ramesha told him to go to Mr. Kushner, Mr. Kushner, he had like an order yard, he was a tire yid. And then go take, have him look at it and, and, and see if he could fix it. And the yeshiva would cover the expense. He goes to Mr. Kushner, he brings the car, and he looks it over. And, uh, and Mr. Kushner tells Uncle Ben to come by. 
He said, I want you to, I want, I want to ask you some questions about what happened. Tell me the story, what happened? Uncle Ben had said it to him, he made a turn, it pulled out, Ramesha told him to put it back in, it went in, he drove away. He said, okay, do it again. He, Mr. Kushner hadn't fixed the car yet. He said, do it again, whatever you did then. Okay. He walks, he just gets into the car, Uncle Ben holds onto the steering wheel, he starts pulling, it pulled right out. It was broken, it pulled right out. He said, okay, now ban it, now put it back in. So he tried to put it back in, it didn't go in. It goes like this, it goes like this, it goes like this, it goes like this. He can't get the thing in. He's trying, he's trying, he's trying. And Mr. Krishna told Ben, he said, I thought so. You can't get that thing in. You can get it out, but you can't get it in. Why? He said, because the way they make steering wheels, is like teeth. Like teeth. It's like metal wheels and gears and teeth. And I think there's like, I don't remember the numbers, like hundreds and hundreds of these teeth, maybe, maybe a thousand of these little teeth all around, and they have to match up with the teeth on the steering wheel, the metal post that comes from the steering wheel, that also has them. And when you put it in, they have to line up perfectly, exactly the way it's supposed to go. And there's only one way to do it. If it's a little off, a little this way or a little this way, it won't go. It's matching, it's, it's the teeth with the grooves. It's, I don't know what he's talking about, but this is the way he explained it. He said, you need a special tool to do it. You can't just do it. You have to bring it to the garage. They have special equipment, and they align it. And then they align it, goes in, and then they make sure it doesn't come out again. He said, how'd you do it? And Uncle Bennett said, I don't know. I didn't have special tools. I didn't have special equipment. Just one day I was holding it, and Ramesha said to put it in. And Mr. Kushner said, you know, been, he's been in his business for a long time. And he said, that's a mephist. That's a miracle, because there's, there's no way humanly possible that out of sheer luck, sheer coincidence, you're going to get it in the very first shot, or the second shot, or the third shot. And because he was so amazed at this miracle, he said, I'm going to fix it, and you know what's going to cost you, Bennett? It's going to cost you nothing. Nothing. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to Inspire.org.